all to my channel if this is your first time of coming to my channel thanks a lot don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like share and subscribe so in today's tutorial we are going to making a simple video on how to cut wrap with double layer flay okay so we'll be dealing with wrap with double layer flay so what are the basic measurements required in order for you to achieve your wrap with double layer flay we have your shoulder measurements bust waist hip and your gown length so don't forget to join us on Facebook City Designs and also on Instagram CG Designs. Visit our website. We have amazing fashion illustration on our website. All the details are going to be in the description box below. Now, our shoulder measurement is 14 divided by 2. We have 7 plus half inch for our joining allowance to the sleeve. We have 7 and half our bust is 40 divided by 4 plus 2 we have 12 our waist is 34 34 divided by 4 plus 2 we have 10.5 our gown length is 36 so we have 36 plus 2 for the sewing allowance we have 38 inches our hip is 40 40 divided by 4 plus 2 we have 12 inches now you will discover that in today's tutorial we said what we want to achieve is wrap with double layer flay so that means that for the upper side of our dress we are going to have wrap so we'll go ahead now and deduct that from our gown length now where we are going to have wrap is from the shoulder to two inches above our navel which is known as half length okay so we are going to have our half length now half length i have 17 inches so 17 plus one which is just for our sewing allowance we have 18 inches now for the gown length the, that is the gown length where we are going to have our flay. The gown length where we are going to have our flay. Our gown length now is 36 minus 17 inches. So 36, which is our gown length, minus your half length, we are going to have 19 inches. So 19 inches now plus 2 inches for our sewing allowance, we are going to have 21 inches. So what this simply means is that for the flay part of the dress, we have 21 inches. And for the upper part of the dress, we are going to have 18 inches. If you have any question in the course of this tutorial, please feel free to drop your questions in the comment section or you have any topic you want us to make a video on, feel free to drop it in the comment section. We also have trainings. Trainings are available, both online training and physical training. All the details are going to be in the description box below. So guys, we've gone ahead now to fold our fabric into four. When you are dealing with styles that have flay, it is necessary for you to like cut out the flay first before you cut out the other part, right? So we are attaching this um, flay to the waist. So we are going to be using our waist measurements in order for us to get the curve of our flay. So our waist, all you have to do is just place your tape measure this way randomly and check out where you will have your waist measurement okay so you go ahead now and just mark the point wow i hope you guys can see it but go ahead now and let me zoom it in okay so this is the point here you go ahead now and mark this point all you have to do now is place your tape measure this way and check out what you have so we have seven inches you will take it this way, mark seven inches, take it this way, straight, and mark seven inches, right? So you go ahead now and connect all the lines together. You can see what we have. So you 
always make sure that you cross check to be sure that what you have there is equal to your waist measurement so let's do that now okay we have our waist measurement at this point now you are going to do now is you are going to go ahead now and cut out the length of the flay so for the length now we have 21 inches so you place it at this point and then you mark where you have 21 inches so when you place it at this point you have your 21 inches now you now raise it up to this point so that you can have like your full flay so from this point now we have 28 inches so you just take your tape measure this way take your tape measure this way mark 28 inches your tape measure also you take it this way you mark 28 inches so i'm just being careful because my fabric is like a shaking fabric so Then I'll also place it this way and mark 28 inches. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead now and connect all the lines together. See the curve of our flay. So now we'll go ahead now and cut out this part and also this part where we have our circle shape. So after cutting it out, I'll show you guys what it looks like. So guys, this is what you will have. We've gone ahead now to cut it out and also to cut out this part. So this is what we are going to have now for the first layer of the flay. So guys, now we want to cut the first layer of the flay, which is like the upper part of the flay. So I've gone ahead now to fold my fabric in a triangular shape. So the first one we did was in a square shape into two and this one is in a triangular shape. So we're also attaching this to the waist measurement. So you also need your waist at this point. So you place it this way. Mark where you have your waist measurement. So we have our waist at this part. So This is where we have our waist. Now you place your tape measure at this part to check what you have. So we have 12.5. 12, 12 you place it this way. You mark it. So you have your curve coming this way. This is your curve. So you make sure you check this curve. That is, it should be equal to your waist measurements, right? So at this point now, you will place your tape measure now and mark where you have your flay length, which is 16 inches. This is where we have our flay length, which is 16 inches. So you place your tape measure at this point now and check out what you have. So we have 29 inches. So you just place your tape measure this way. Mark where you have 29 inches. Mark where you have 29 inches and then you just basically connect the lines together. So this is where you are going to have your length and this is where you are going to have your waist measurement. So you go ahead now and cut out this part and also cut out this part. Now the difference between this triangular form of flay and the square form of flay is for the square form of flay, which is the first one we cut out, it is actually fuller than this, okay? Because, and it also consumes a no more fabric compared to this. So, if you are working with enough fabric, you can decide that you want both the first layer and the second layer to be the full form of flay, right? So, you can have this full effect. Why, if you are working with limited fabric or you don't want the both layers to be full, then you can work with this triangular shape of flay so i'll go ahead now and cut out the length and also cut out this point and show you guys so guys after cutting it out this is what we have so so guys we want to cut out the back block of the upper block right we're starting from the back so we'll go ahead now and mark our shoulder which is seven and a half This. 
so guys now i want to cut out the back block so i have my shoulder to arm o which is nine and a half inches you can see the line and also the next thing we we'll do now is we we'll go ahead and mark our shoulder measurement which is 7.5 now on this bust line, I'll mark my bust measurement, which is 12 inches. I've marked my bust, which is 12 inches. And I'll mark my waist, which is 10.5 inches. Now the next thing we are going to do now is to connect our waistline to our bust line. We've gone ahead now to connect it. And also we'll connect our shoulder to bust so you can see what we have so you can see what we have so the next thing we are going to do now is just to mark our neckline so for the wideness of the neckline i'm going to make use of three inches Wideness of the neckline three inches and for the deepness i'm going to make use of one and half now the reason why the back is always high is because the front is deep already so we'll go ahead and also mark our shoulder slope and then we'll connect it together so what we just did here was we marked our shoulder measurements from shoulder to bust we have nine and half on this point now we marked our bust measurements our waist measurements, our neckline, and then we connect it. So I'll go ahead now and cut this out. So guys, after cutting it out, this is what we have for the back block. So you discover that we have a single piece this way for the back block. So I'll go ahead now and set this aside. The front block now, where we are going to have our wrap, we've gone ahead now to fold our front block into two, and then you place your back block this way. Place your back block on your front block. Now you will discover that we have about four to five inches. So when you are placing it, make sure you have about four to five inches, okay? At the front this way before you place your back block. Now the essence of this is just to enable you get the wrap effect. Now once you are done with that, the next thing you are going to do now is determine how deep you want the neckline of the wrap to be. That is how open you have to do is mark where your neckline starts. This is actually very easy, trust me. Mark where your neckline starts, which is this point where you have the neckline of your back block. So I'll just go ahead now and trace this out. Now, I've gone ahead now, I think it's better this way. So I've gone ahead now to just cut out where we have the arm or the sides. This is the extra five inches we kept in front. So like I said earlier, you just go ahead now and mark where your neckline is going to start from. Mark where your neckline is going to start from. You can see the marking, that is where our back neckline started from. So you just give it like a slant shape this way. Just go ahead now and give it a slant shape. So guys, after cutting it out, this is what we have. You can see that at this part, we don't want it to be too um, opened. Now, let's go ahead now and... So this is what we are going to have. This is what we are going to have. So you can see the wrap effect. This is what we are going to have. You can see what it looks like now so this is what we have this is what we have for the back for the front block rather this is what we have which happens to be the wrap shape now because what we have is a gown and the reason why I didn't cut this out at first is because we'll be using this to cut out the front block so that was why I didn't cut out this at first right now because this is a gown you will go ahead now and 
cut this out and make sure you factor in your zip allowance if it's a gown but if it's a top you won't like have to open it up so i will go ahead now and open this up because i'm going to be having like my zipper which is going to be running through at the back block so i hope you understand so now for the sewing part now now we want to sew it what you are going to do basically is very easy to sew this go ahead and m the neckline so i'll go ahead and m the neckline for the back block and also m my neckline for the front block which happens to be where i have my wrap which happens to be where i have my wrap this is the neckline where you have your wrap so i'll go ahead now and m it and after m it i'll show you guys what it looks like we've gone ahead now to m the neckline after aiming the neckline, basically, I just went ahead to join the shoulders together. So, I have my back block and my front block joined together this way. So, you can see the wrap effect. So, the next thing you are going to do now is, you are going to make use of, you are going to make use of the bust measurement and the waist measurement and couple this up to give you like your basic top. So, once I'm so guys this is the upper block we went ahead to attach our double layer flay to it and this is basically what it looks like so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you guys in my next one bye